One man who has always sought to put the fun into racing, but has given so many people so many great days in the sport, including this memorable day here in Dubai in the year 2000, 19 years ago, can it be, is the man who's ridden over 3,000 winners, over 220 Group 1 races, has been at the top of his game internationally for three decades. And this autumn of his career promises to be perhaps the most fruitful spell of it. Frankie Dottori, welcome to Luck on Sunday. And it's great to have you with us looking well. Should we say summer instead of autumn? Ah, well, there you are, you see. There you are, because you've been threatening this autumn of my career thing for a while. It but... was me who started it. It's right. depressing. You know when you're going to retire, what are we talking about? So you're one of these infuriating people who, however old you are, and I'm not going to go into it, seems to get younger and younger with each passing year. How do you feel in yourself? I feel good. Uh, apart from that uh, I have to wear reading glasses at the moment, I feel exactly the same. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, I, you know, in the old days I used to ride 1,000 races a year. Now I'm probably ride two, between 200 and 300, so... Uh, I, I, I don't have the workload that I used to have, so hopefully doing it that way might give me another couple of years towards the end of my career. And the one thing I know about you, for all everyone knows, you're, you're good fun and you like to party and what have you, you have got quite a good way of preserving yourself, of just keeping yourself in the right mindset. Yeah, I think that's very important. And obviously, uh, you know, going round Windsor on a Monday might not tickle me as much as it used to in the past. So I, I try to kind of uh, see myself, because most of the big races, don't, don't forget, is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So uh, I, I concentrate more uh, but on, on, on that side of the week. But obviously, to be able to do that, you, you've got to work for people what allow you to do that. And at the moment, uh, I work for John and uh, John Gosden, obviously. Uh, he, he really understands my position. Uh, we, we have got Rob Avelin that works for us. He can f help me out, fill in the gaps. And that way, uh, we've got a nice, happy family. I, uh, uh, we all making a living and we all uh, understand where we are. And like I said, hopefully that will give me uh, maybe an, an extra couple of years towards the end of my, my, my career. And a, maybe a bit more than a couple of years. You said you'd go on way... Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah. you know, oh, oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm 48, so, uh, I mean, I, I'm in 20 months' time, I'll be 50, so I, I think to, to get to 50, be, 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 you know, I should get there by injuries. Uh, I mean, in, in, in the jockey's life, 50 is the magical number. My dad stopped at 51, and... Pat at 51 and Willie 53. Uh, so, you know, when you get to 50, then every year is kind of, you know, on the lap of the gods because when, when, when you do fall at, at this age, you, you, you don't bounce anymore, you break. So, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll go as long as my body will permit it. And, uh, and if I have to break Leicester's record of 56, so be it. See, you rode with Leicester Pickett, I you did. rode with Pat Edry, you I rode did. with Willie Carson, all these kind of old greats that you know, I remember from my, from my childhood. Does that feel odd to you sometimes, that you've kind of spanned like two really distinct generations? Well, what, what really feels odd to me that where I used to look up to people then, then I, I, I thought I was the youngest one. Now, um, you know, we, we got this uh, unwritten rule in the, in the waiting room that uh, you start from the bottom of the room and as you get older, uh, you work your way to near the door because obviously when you get to the, the door then that you 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 basically on the way out you retire and I, I actually found myself next to the door now this last 10 years and uh, it's quite daunting that uh, you know where I thought I was always feel inside that I'm the youngest one I'm actually I realize I'm, I'm one of the oldest ones it's only I can count people older than me on my hand, really, and, uh, but, you know, uh, it's a magical place to change the room because you, you have people from the age of 16 to my old age, me of 48, that, uh, you know, we all, we all basically share lives together. You know, we travel together and we ride together, and so uh, it, it's, it's, it's that kind of uh, timeless time that uh, uh, you, you kind of, you, you never feel old.
You always feel young. And that's the thing that people seem to feel really hard walking away from. Um, is it a friendlier place now than when you started in it? Is it a different place now? Different, different. Uh, I think the workload and the amount of racing now has changed a lot. I mean, I remember when I first started, we had no Sunday racing, and it was only evening races, maybe two or three times a week. So it was a, a, a lot more time, uh, you know, to, to share things. Uh, you know, we used to go to Air, we used to spend a week there, or Goodwood, we used to stay down. Or, uh, so all the major meetings, we used to kind of gather together. And, and, and in, in this day and age, uh, you, know, you know, if, for example, if you're York for the Ebo meeting, mm -hmm. there'd, there'd be people jumping in the car and rushing off to Thursk or Wolverhampton at night. So, uh, the workload for the jockeys now is more, and I, it's kind of uh, took uh, a lot of fun out of it, you know, because people are, are more busy than they, than used to when, when I start. And of course, you're uh, in a, a pretty good position as far as you're riding all these lovely horses. You can actually make a living out of the game, and you can still make a good living out of the game, even by picking and choosing where you ride. How many jockeys do you think can actually make a decent living out of it? The, the, the point is, you know, we all start with a, with, a, with a dream. When you start at 16, well, you know, you start professionally at 16. You, have, you know, everybody wants to be a Cristiano Ronaldo. And, you know, it's like when you feel a child want to be a footballer. So, uh, but the, the chances of, of, of you to, to, to get to a level that I got or Ryan Moore got, that riding for a superpower, stable, and riding the good horses, that's where you make your money. So, it, it's quite, it's, it's, it's not that simple. And uh, and most of the lads are, you know, working 18 hours a day, uh, driving near there and everywhere, and uh, and it is it is hard work. Do you, I mean, it, do you... it looks it looks rosy. Everybody looks at me and says, "Well, you ride all the good horses, you win all the big races." But you know, uh, I, I'm I'm like I said, myself and Ryan at the moment. I, the one what actually in, the, in this privileged position, but you know, then all, all, the, all the other people are really uh, they have to work hard, and uh, it's not as rosy as people think. You know, we're not we're not uh, like how do you say the uh, people think that you know we're swimming in money and uh, you know having a great yeah. life. The life is great, it's exciting. Uh, that's why we do it. We love the horses. We love the competition, but uh, it's also uh, uh, not not as rosy as people think. You know, when you think footballers get the average footballer in this day and age get fifty thousand pound a week. You know, if we get fifty thousand in six months, it's, it's 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 quite a good living. It's a good result. Yeah. and you have to keep working. Uh, does this period of your career give you more satisfaction because you? I'm not saying you hit the bottom, but you went pretty close to it. After after the relationship with Godolphin ended, does it does it give you more satisfaction because you, you've got yourself back up from an unpromising position? Yeah, yes, yes, uh, yes. Because I was almost forced to retire when I didn't want to. I was only 44, and uh, you know I have to s say big thanks to Sheikh Joan, who he gave me a lifeline, and then obviously uh, John. Uh, but you know, I went the full circus because I started with John in the, in the early 90s and went to get off and I went back to him and I don't know what it is. I don't know if he, he trains the horses to suit me or I ride the horses to suit his training. But uh, if this last four years together, I mean, what 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 we haven't achieved together? Uh, you, know, you 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 must say we have coincidence, but I think you know. Uh, with the length of time that we, we, we did so great, I don't think it's just about coincidence. You know, we, I think it's about chemistry and I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but, uh, you know, maybe going back of, you know, Lester and O'Brien or Swinburne with Stout or... It's just an understanding. Yeah, correct. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it works. You're both quite strong characters. You're both quite, quite vocal characters. Who, who do you think takes the lead in the relationship? Uh, he's, um, uh, John can be uh, very uh, strict and, uh, uh, how do you say, very particular in the mornings. 
Well, that's, that's why it probably makes him so great. Uh, but then in the other end, when it comes race day, is probably the calm and most philosophical and most reassuring person to ride for. So he balances it out. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, we, we give each other's opinions, and, uh, but, you know, we, we, we get on. And, and where, where actually, 25 years ago, I used to look at him as a father figure. Now, you know, he's, he's, he's made a, uh, an amazing impact on my career. Now, he's more uh, of an old friend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know. And he does, I've noticed he doesn't mind giving you a little dig occasionally. Oh, yeah, even always. in public. Like, <laughs> when I'm actually just looking over your shoulder there on the, on the video wall, and that was Stradivarius when he won the Gold Cup. And, uh, he 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 did give it that I've just reminded the Italian that it's not all about him, you know, it's about the horse as well. So then for the rest of the season, you're busy doing this to the horse. You've obviously got enough of a robust relationship to give each other a bit of stick if you need to. Yeah, well, John is, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not there because he's a fool. Obviously, he's a, he's a very clever man, he's a, an amazing trainer, but, um, you know, he, he knows how to play me, you know, he knows where to give me a lift or where to give me a kick up the bum. So, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's definitely got my number anyway. And of course, you're, you're, the public face of Frankie Dittori is someone that is up and smiling and enjoying it. And you do enjoy the sport, yeah. don't you? You do genuinely have, have fun while you're, while you're working. I think that's very important. But first and foremost, we, we're all in, the, in this game because we love the horses. We love the competition. and It's our life, you know. Uh, you know, I, I find myself going to the stable, even if I don't have to, about three or four times a week, because, you know, you, you, it's your life, you become attached to them, and, uh, you know, who's got a sixth sense? And, uh, and we are privileged to be part of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's no more uh, a, a job anymore, it's actually a way of life, and uh, people, you know, people think we just get on the horse and make him run as fast as they can and get off and go home. You know, it's, it's more to it than that. You know, you, you, you have a rapport with the horse, all of them, uh, and, and that's why we do it. I'm not suggesting you're getting soppy or, or sentimental as, as time goes on, but do you feel like closer attachments to the horses as, as time goes on? I think uh, for two reasons. Obviously, when you start, you have lots of ambitions. Uh, you want to be champion apprentice, you want to be champion jockey, you want to win this and that, that, that. Uh, lucky for me, in my case, I managed to do everything, all of that. And now, uh, I, it's no more I'm doing it because, obviously, it's, it's my livelihood. I still have to send kids to school and make a living, but... And a lot of them as well. Yeah, but it's more... Uh, I don't have the pressure of convince myself I'm going to try to win this and that because luckily enough for me that I, I managed to win most of the things that I wanted to do so now I, I'm, I'm able to take a step back and really really enjoy this last few years that I've got to uh, because I don't have the pressure of achieving things I don't know if that makes sense it does it makes complete sense the pressure's off and that means you can enjoy the the horses and, for what they are and, a little and, bit more and I'll be honest with you I think that's why perhaps results are better now than before because sometimes when you force things, force things or issues, uh, try to make things happen, that's when you mess up. Uh, now that I'm able to take a step back, kind of result of things come to me easier than, than doing this way than when I was younger, tried to force the issue. I mean, was there ever a period where you actually thought you weren't riding very well? Of course. Uh, obviously, when I left Cadolphin, uh, it was the 18 months period that uh, I didn't have a job uh, and it was quite scary that uh, I never felt that in my life that uh, I could see my body doing things my, my mind wanted to do something but my body was doing something else and uh, it, it's what they say it's all about confidence yeah. and, and I guess at, at that moment my confidence was rock bottom and, uh, and I, I, could, I, could, I could see my body doing things that uh, my mind didn't, didn't want it to happen and and uh, so yeah 
It's weird, almost what, almost like Absolutely. an outer body experience. You could almost Horrible. see yourself doing Horrible. something and, wrong and, like, and yeah, couldn't correct it. Yeah, you could see it. I could see it do it, but I couldn't stop it because you know your mind was playing tricks. I, you, you, your confidence was so low, and uh, but, you know, but in, up to that moment, I never experienced it because for for 20 years my career has went up and up and up. So it was actually quite weird. But uh, so now to be back to. <laughs> What I was is, yeah. is is nice. Yeah, really nice, really nice. Going back to, to what we what we were saying earlier on. But then, but then you hear so often in, in on on sporting channels, ah, oh, his confidence is gone, blah blah. In any sport, and and until you actually experience it you yourself, you, you don't really understand what they're talking about. But it's completely true. And I'm, you're in a good place now. But that must have been incredibly difficult to deal with. It's not like you haven't got enough else going yeah. on in your life as well. As you said, you've got wife, five kids, but big I, but house, no, I'm, I'm big, not joking. whatever. You, uh, when she, John gave me the job, it was in J July, I uh, was August, September, October, maybe three months away from retiring because up to that moment, I couldn't find a job, I couldn't see my way out. and uh, So I'm, I'm, I was slowly preparing myself for what's the next step. So, uh, you know, but I... I uh, you know, like I said, I was three months away from stopping. So, but did you feel just enough love from people in racing? Did you feel enough warmth from the sport, or did you think the sport was starting to just cool off on you a little bit? Yeah, it's basically, uh, uh, it's like a potato. Nobody wanted to touch me. Uh, I was still in the sport, but you know, I was getting a lot of uh, uh, sympathy from everybody. Everybody, but uh, th that doesn't pay the bills, or no. that doesn't uh, give you any self-satisfaction. So. Uh, you know, it was, it was quite weird, but but you know, I, I you know I, I believed in myself, and I and I kept kept going, and uh, I, I, I in my heart of heart, I didn't feel like I deserved to to finish like that. So I'm glad, uh, you know, God gave me another chance, and uh, here we are, Nick. We are, and we've got all these amazing horses still to look forward to. The the back end of last year with with Enable, you were saying, and it, it actually made you feel quite quite emotional because she essentially has had the worst or most unconventional preparation yeah. for an autumn that any horse could have, especially a filly trying to train on. And there she goes, digs it out in Paris, digs it out in horrible ground in, in Kentucky. She's a bit of a superstar really, isn't she? she? I, I, I don't like to be biased with horses, but you know, she's one of my favorite from, from day one really, and uh, she's an amazing horse. Uh, in in every way, and um, you know, when you think that we were kind of cheated, maybe for three or four months, we never saw, and then people kind of forgot about her. But with with with, with the uh, amazing skills of the vet and John and all the people involved to 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 get her back and to have a. a a forerunner prep race on the old weather before before winning the second arc is pretty remarkable. You know, uh, just, just just shows you the brilliance of of training skills of John. And then, uh, you know, you know, of, you know, I we went to America with with uh, great expectations, but you were there. You know, it was always in the back of my mind that no horse ever. Don yeah. the Ark in the British Cup. I came close with Golden Horn, and uh, so to do that, uh, you know, surf, uh, personal pride was amazing. And uh, you no, know, it's great that you know she she's got a massive reputation to uh, to showcase around the world. You know, uh, I mean, you know, I'm so proud of her, and I'm so proud uh, what she has achieved, and you know. I can't, you know, it, it, it won't be till about May till I, till I, I get to sit in her, but I can't wait. You know, I, I still you know, try to see her whenever I go to the stables and give her the parliaments. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, to, to have a horse like that is also a lifetime, you know. It's, you know I've, I've, I've rode some great horses, and uh, but most of the great horses that I've rode, they, they kind of retire very quickly. Mm. But, you know, touch wood, hopefully, that... Uh, you know, she's five, and we, we get to enjoy one more year. What? Thanks for Prince Khalid and the team that took keep her in training. But it's very unusual uh, to have such a great horse to stay in training at five. 
Uh, I can't wait to see her again. Of course, she came in that vintage era for, for John last year yep. with horses like Crackman and Roaring Lion and so on. But it's all about renewal. That's, the, yeah. that's what I think. I mean, We've, we've got Cheltenham next week and everybody loves Cheltenham. Yeah. Everyone loves the jumping, everyone loves the top class competition, horses coming back and that's why a lot of the public is warm to enable. Correct. But part of a flat trainer's ability is to see the potential in renewal, isn't it? And to identify good horses when they come in as, as two year olds. I'm guessing that's what John Gosden has in spades. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's, they, they, they don't arrive as superstars. You, 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 you know, you, 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 you work with something raw and uh, the ability of trainers and staff, jockeys, you know, to, to, to develop this little thoroughbred to become a superstar and uh, it, it doesn't fall off a tree, you know. Of course, you work with potentials, but it, it takes hours, days and, you know, months to, you know, so that, that's what is very exciting you know, obviously you you, uh, you start with a empty page and uh, and things build, build on you know and uh, you know uh, so that, that's that's what uh, so exciting about our sport that you, you you never know you know what you're gonna have in the basket you know, if, you know the next superstar not, don't, not don't look at that basket you're not gonna get much out of there I can tell you <laughs> this is now very appealing <laughs> so so that, that's 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 the fascination about our sport you, you know, like every year is a new year and who knows. And so there might be something lovely lurking there. Well, you know you've got a, a hugely exciting classic prospect to look forward to, at least one hugely exciting classic prospect to look forward to. It is only seven or eight weeks till the Guineas and, I mean, and two darn hot time. It, it, it's, it's four weeks yesterday and uh, then hopefully two darn not will run in the Greenham. So mm. uh, it's, it's not long. Uh, I, uh, I've only seen him at the moment. It's very exciting and... Uh, uh, you know, when when do you get allowed to sit on him again? Probably in a couple of weeks. Okay, <laughs> but they kind of leave that till fairly yeah, late yeah, in the they piece. Them. They, they like me on, but they don't like me on. Mm. Uh, because well, people watching this, then uh, you know, usually a rider rides the horse almost every day because he gets to know their quirks, mm. he gets to know their well-being. But then when somebody else different gets on. They also already feel something different, and they tend to uh, it's nature they tend to get more excited and and try harder and run faster so uh, so the, the 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 good side when a jockey rides it you you, you get better feedback, but the downside is that uh, sometimes you you tend to work the horses too hard and then you might leave the the, the race in the mornings and then they turn up at the races flat. So uh, it's, it's, it's a catch-22, so that's why uh, I don't ride him too close to the race, but I don't ride him too early before the race, so usually in the middle. We've seen with our own eyes that he's an exceptional horse. Mm. The clock has stopped several times to tell us that he's an exceptional horse. Is there anything you think you can layer on top of that from your perspective to, to suggest that he's completely out of the ordinary it is um, you know you know it's straight to 125 so it's, it's I mean, it's all there for us to see it is you know, I, I gotta say it's the best thrill I've ever ridden um, is uh, I mean I rode Dubai Millennium I rode Dubai we very much in death stamp um, you know it's, it's quite powerful in front and uh, <laughs> I know it may, I'll make you laugh. He, he moves his legs like uh, Fred Flintstones, you know, when he, when he gets his legs out of the car. And I mean, he moves his legs so quick <laughs> that even I, I, I'm quite shocked how quick he moves his Fred legs. Fred and Wilmot driving the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah when, he's, when he gets his feet out of the car. Yeah, yeah that's how quick he moves his legs. <laughs> so it's not about the size of the horse or the biggest stride. It's how quick they move their legs and he moves them really It's quick. how well they can do a Fred Flintstone impression and he can do it, he can do it pretty well. He's just one of a, a whole load of exciting horses. John's got Calix, of course, and a whole load of other two-year-olds. Uh, Calix is obviously a little bit fragile because we haven't seen him since the commentary, but he, he could be a hell of a horse. Yeah, he's very quick. I mean, I only rode him once, and, uh, you know, his, his, his form is red hot, and, uh, and he, 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 I've, I've been seeing him in the morning. He looks amazing. Mm. Uh, yeah, he's another 
potential uh, good horse. Uh, but you know what? Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to ride the old boys. Like uh, obviously we mentioned Unable, but even Stratavarius. I mean, what a horse he's been. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, he, 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 he knocks everything out of uh, what you think is a stain type. I mean, he's not very, very big, he's quite compact. Usually, you think stain types you think like... rangy. Yeah, the, the big that. orange, the, yeah. you know, big long strides. But he's, you know, he's got an amazing stamina and uh, he's, he's got something unique for a stair. He's got to turn a foot. Mm. You know, if he can follow any pace and then he can, he can quicken like a... And he can still win even when he's having a bad day. Yeah, which is so, he's, really so I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, good for Bjorn Nielsen that he's put so much into racing for so many years to have such a, such, such a great horse. It strikes me that you, you don't ever look back with any regret, bitterness, acrimony to, to, towards, towards difficult parts of your career. You, you're just driving on. Is that simply because you're now in such a position to be able to enjoy that luxury? Or is that just part of your temperament? Is I that think who you are? It's, I think it's, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, you know, uh, it's part of me. I always look forward to try to surround myself with uh, positive people, uh, try to have a good, happy family life. I enjoy my traveling, I enjoy riding, I enjoy new challenges. Uh, and I think that's what keeps you young, you know, if you, if you, if you drag yourself down, you get stuck in the rut, then uh, I don't think that's the way forward. Yeah. Or you're always sniping at people all the time. Then yeah, they're always, you know, and I think... Uh, negativity. Yeah, correct. And also, yeah, I like, I like, I think traveling plays a big part. You know, I like to ride in different parts of the world and uh, it keeps me young. And the other thing, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you, you enjoy company. You don't, yeah, you in, correct. And who, it doesn't really... No. You're, you're not too discriminating. Like, you, you, you love talking to people. Yeah, love, yeah, I, I do, I do. Uh, uh, I, I don't think you'll ever catch me, you know, sitting at home reading a book. <laughs> you know, I always, uh, I, I need to uh, feed off people, I need to be, yeah. You just feed off, feed yeah, off good I, energy. I, I do, I do, and then, you know, if, 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 if I would say anything different, I'd be lying to you. You know, I, I enjoy the big stage, I enjoy the crowd, I, it's, it's part of what I do, and uh, it, it makes me ride better. Is there, is, there, is there an omission? Is there something you really long to achieve that you haven't achieved yet? Or you've pretty much ever done everything you need to do. But look, if we single out races, obviously I never won the July Cup. I love to win that because I'm from Newmarket. I never won the Melbourne Cup. Uh, Michelle Payne should have done. Michelle Payne <laughs> should have done last time, and uh, and um, I'm getting ripped from the boys because I got beaten by a girl. But in fairness, she rides very well. And uh, yeah, but that, you know that's singling out a couple of races. But in, in fairness. Uh, all those, all those that you mentioned, that's, that's what keeps me going. You know, that's, that's what I enjoy. That's, and I enjoy, um, I enjoy working for a team. And, and, and being a John, I feel that I'm part of a team. Uh, I uh, have a good banter with the lads. Obviously, you know, I'm, I've got a great working relationship with John. And uh, it, 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 it makes me feel really satisfied. Uh, that's what really makes me enjoy because when we do win a big race, I feel that we're all part of it, and that's very important to me. Um, thank you very much for coming and chatting to us. Um, I know this place is like a second home to you, yeah. uh, Dubai, and you've had many, many great moments here and at the other place when it was when it was still going. And you're off to Bahrain this week. I'm, I'm riding in Bahrain on Friday for the Kings Cup, and then Saudi Arabia on Saturday. Then I go back. Home, hopefully, okay, my legs are crossed too damn hot, <laughs> and then I come back for the World Cup. So, uh, l you know, lots to look forward to. Uh, you know, I know that uh, it's all about Cheltenham this week, and then obviously the Grand National, but that it won't be long till uh, we be in action. And it's great that we've caught you at a relatively quiet moment to be able to. to catch but when you when you say to me, come to uh, to Nick Lock on Sunday. <laughs> Whatever. Well, no, can office. I just start? It started with, uh, can you come and, and do the show on Sunday? Immediately the response by, sorry, no, I'm in Dubai. And I'm like, so am I in Dubai. <laughs> what, a, what a nice place to do it. <laughs> Top man, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Frankie Dottori, uh, my guest uh, this week, my special guest with you. My thanks also to Tom Stanley, to George Baker, and particularly to Amma Abdulaziz. Thank you for watching. It's been an unusual program, I'm sure you'll agree, but a very rewarding and enjoyable one, certainly for me.
from me, from Mr. Dottori, and from all the team out here in Dubai. See you tomorrow at Cheltenham. Bye-bye.